together. I'm going to show you, well, first I'm going to show you the result, and then I'll show you how I got there. But if we're going to put some of these motion principles and some of these object transformation principles um, into an animation to make things more lifelike or you know more anthropomorphic or human-like, so that our motions aren't just mechanical, um, we'll see that things will behave and we'll, we'll kind of combine both principles to create a kind of pattern behavior that's more natural. What I mean by that is everything is under the sort of uh, rubric or the, uh, the laws of gravity, right? So if I have a ball bouncing, for example, I'll just play this out. Just play these from the start. You can see I've got this like little jelly ball here bouncing slowly, right? Well, you can see that I've applied different rates of motion, right? So that it falls faster, and then the bounce back, it actually falls, the rate of motion that it it's rises and falls is a little slower because it's kind of, it's absorbed some of that, uh, that, that force, even though things do fall at the same rate. Um, I've slowed it down on its rebound, and I've also used a little bit of a squash on it, right? So the, the force of it hitting the bottom of the frame it gives it a little bit more of a, um, of, a, of a bounce, like things actually give a little bit, right? They're not just solid shapes. So let me show you how I, how I got there. You can see there's a bunch of keyframes here. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do, I'll just start a whole new sequence here. And I'm going to just go up and create a circle. So I'll have shift control to get my round circle. And I'm going to set a couple of, um, couple of things. Now, one thing I want to do is I want to actually center this, see this anchor point here? This is around which everything will rotate. And so if I show you rotate, it'll actually make much more sense. If I rotate this object, it's around itself, right? If I rotate the layer, whoops. Hold on, let's rotate the layer. My bad. You can see it rotates around that central point, right? So I'm going to align all of these anchor points first, just so that, that when I squash it, it isn't being squashed off axis. Make sense? All right. So what I'm going to do is go up to this anchor point tool here. I'm going to select first the, the layer, the anchor point tool. I'm just going to move that into the center. So now I have a centered anchor point, right? And now I've got to create a couple of keyframes, right? I'm going to just go up to, well, let's first, Hit the stopwatch on all of them, just so I have all my keyframes set at a point. And I'm going to just position this so it's up and out of the frame. So I'm going to do this numerically, just because I want it to be up and out of the frame. So that's where it starts. And then in half a second, 15 frames, I'm going to advance it, do it numerically. I'm going to have it come down to, let's say, 800. OK, almost there. Down just a bit more, kind of like that. So just as a, just below the frame, and you'll see why in a second. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is, first of all, it's got a hit, right? So maybe actually raise this up a little bit, just like so it's the ground, and I'll advance it one frame because after it's just slightly after it hits, I'm going to unlock my scale and I'm going to squash it a little bit. Now you can see what's happened. I've squashed it, squashing it evenly. So I've got to go back in time, hitting my arrow key. I'll hit that one. There. And I'm just going to drop it so it just, as it squashes, it hits that layer. OK, so it, it's going to do this. OK, so I've got something there. It kind of hit and squashed, right? I'm going to shrink my preview area so I can see this. OK, not bad, right? And then it's going to come and rebound, right? So maybe it's going to take a whole other second, say. So that was 15. So maybe it takes a second to bounce back up. I'll put it kind of in the middle here. And of course, going to need to rebound, right? And it's also going to need to unsquash itself. So let's go back and use our arrow keys. These are really handy. Really handy for it squashes once. Maybe 
18. Well, it's bouncing back. Maybe that's when it uh, unsquashes itself. Maybe I'll maybe do 18. I'll give it two frames of the squash. Good, perfect. And here I'm going to link. Whoop! I'm going to link these back on to 100. So it's back to back to normal. And we can see there. That's good. I got a little bit of bounce in there, and it's going to come back up. It comes up, and then it's going to fall. Probably down at the same rate, but it's that rebound that's going to it's going to slowly get lower. If I wanted to create multiple bounces, they would just get lower and lower on the rebound, right, and slower and slower. But everything falls at the same rate, so I'm going to go back down and advance this to. Two seconds numerically helps create a little bit of math here. And I'm just gonna drop it back down. And now a little bit of a slow hit. I might want to take those keyframes, these ones here. And move them in a bit so there's a little bit more so now I've got a bit of buoyancy I've got a bit of give and I've used object transformation plus the rate of motion so things are falling at different rates of motion and rebounding at different rates of motion to simulate the effect of gravity and this is what I mean by different rates of motion and different object transformations can actually create a very dynamic shape motion 